Kyrie Irving and the Boston Celtics got humiliated and demolished by the Milwaukee Bucks in what was supposed to be a terrific season with NBA Finals expectations, Irving and the team simply stunked it up on all cylinders and most of the blame goes on the 27 year old superstar point guard. How's it going guys, my name's Wilson. The Boston Celtics heavily underachieved this season, where many experts thought they would win more than 60 games, this season was an absolute failure and things will get better for the franchise since Kyrie will likely take his talents elsewhere. It all started when the 25 year old superstar demanded a trade out of Cleveland, threw off everybody by surprise. After coming off a 5 game finals loss to Golden State in 2017, it caught the franchise and LeBron off guard, stating he felt it was time for him to be the leader and face of his own team. His four preference were actually New York, Miami, San Antonio, and Minnesota. According to Chris Haynes, Cleveland decided to deal him to Boston, a very good team which the Cavs beat in the conference finals in exchange for Isaiah Thomas, Jay Crowder, and Ty Sizic, and the first round pick which turned out to be Colin Sexton. It seemed like the most lopsided trade at the time, but it did cost the Celtics Sexton, who looks to be a promising talent. The Cavs were unlikely going to beat Golden State if Irving would have stayed in 2018, and he would have left Cleveland regardless so the cast might have benefited most for the long run. Irving was looked upon as an upgrade from IT, was banged up last season, played only 60 games with averages of 24.4 points but the team was just as good without him. Despite him going down in the second half of the season, the seeds led by rookie Jason Tatum, two guard Jalen Brown, veterans Marcus Morris, Al Horford and Marcus Smart all stepped up. Backup Terry Rozier was playing his best ball without Irving. The team won 55 games. Those Celtics without Kyrie beat the Bucks in 7 games last season. We know Milwaukee's a way better team team with a better coach this season, but Boston won without their two best players. Horford, Brown and Rozier averaged 17 plus those 7 games. Scary Terry even outplayed Eric Blesso, disrespectfully called him Drew Blesso, but Rozier was the one looking like Drew Blesso this season, being Kyrie's backup, not making much of an impact after being eliminated in 5. From averaging 17 minutes compared to 36 last postseason against the Bucks, Rozier showed his anger, stating Coach Stevens was in a tough position, dealing with all these guys with attitudes, with guys that's all stars trying to get paid lots of money, and other guys just trying to get paid, conflicting with different interest. I don't give a F what nobody say. I sacrifice the most out of anybody. I'm a top point guard in this league. I feel like it's a fresh start whether I'm here or whether I'm gone. I don't blame Rozier one bit, playing like a solid star last season only to give Kyrie the opportunity to shine and Irving simply laid an egg. Rozier has the right to be frustrated and so does all the young Celtics. With championship expectations or bust, Stevens blamed the season on him, saying he did a bad job because of his professionalism, put the blame upon himself and refused to call out Kyrie. In fact, it's clear Kyrie Irving is no leader and this season was an absolute failure at all levels for the 6 time all star. After a mid January game in Orlando with 2.9 seconds left, down 2, Stevens drew up a play which Kyrie didn't like, made his feelings known and Hayward inbounded the ball, found Tatum on the baseline missed the fadeaway, Kyrie unloaded on Horford and Hayward on the floor, even had problems with the veterans, let alone not being close to the young guys. After the game, Irving stated, we had nothing to lose last year, we had nothing to lose and everybody could play free and do whatever they wanted and nobody had any expectations. Those quotes from the press conferences led to more troubling for the team. Instead of taking it upon himself, he poked at the young players, specifically Tatum, Brown and Rozier, wouldn't call them out by name. Irving was the one who was simply holding them back with his isolation style, scored a lot of points but the players simply didn't play as hard with Irving on the floor and that's where Kyrie failed to motivate his team as the best player. Jalen Brown seemed uncomfortable in the starting lineup, came off the bench later on, Gordon Hayward didn't look the same after his injury, Jason Tatum who plays similar to Kyrie's ISO style didn't fit. Irving even called LeBron to apologize how he handled the situation, which shown signs that Kyrie was lost and didn't know how to handle the mess he caused. When asked about free agency, he said he don't owe anybody called out his teammates again, if they had his back, I plan on resigning here next year. The team never got it together, went 500 the final 28 games of the season, the stats clearly shows the team was better without Irving, going 12-3 without him. It would have been alright if Boston lost to Milwaukee in 7 and Kyrie played well, since they were the best regular season team and had the size advantage, but it was an absolute atrocity after game 1. 
Kyrie scored 9 points in the blowout in Game 2 on 4 of 18 shooting, followed up by another poor 8 of 22 shooting in Game 3, said, I don't think you'll see another 8 of 22 game again, so he shot 7 of 22 instead in Game 4, missed 43 shots in 3 straight playoff games, went on to shoot 6 of 21 in Game 5. Having 3 straight bad games is absolutely unacceptable for a player of his magnitude. There's no excuses for his disappointing season, with the team a game away from making the finals last season, with a bunch of role players to underachieving with him on the floor, I understand if his supporting cast was not good, but any other superstar who's a good leader with this Celtic roster will win at least 55 games, be a top 3 seed, and be competitive against the Bucks or Raptors. We all should have seen this coming when many of us forgot in Game 7 of last year between Cavs Celtics, not only was Kyrie Irving missing from the bench, he wasn't even at the game, stating he had deviated sectum surgery. Mark Jackson blasted Irving for that. If you want your team to succeed in a crucial moment, even when you're hurt, you absolutely show up and support your team. What Kyrie did was disrespectful to the Celtics, not being there for his teammates showed us a preview of what type of leader he is. No matter how much pain you're in, as a professional athlete, if you can get up from bed, there's no reason why you shouldn't show up to a big game for your team where you could have motivated your team to win. What Kyrie Irving did there was a huge red flag. Before LeBron's return to Cleveland, Irving was the lone star for the Cavs. His team's records were 21 and 45, 24 and 58, and 33 and 49. His basketball skills are some of the best to watch, but he wouldn't be any different from Kemba Walker if LeBron would have never came back to Cleveland. Who knows if Kyrie would have been able to win a playoff series with the Cavs as the lone star. We know what he's capable of in big games, and he's arguably one of the top 5 most clutch players today. When he gets in the zone, he's unstoppable, hit the biggest shot in Game 7 history, and shows up in big games as we've seen in the postseason, destroyed Steph Curry in 2016, but he's not built to be the leader of a team. Doesn't have what it takes to handle that responsibility with his massive ego. As a ball player and competitor, Kyrie will easily still get a max contract, regardless of his underperforming season, often shines in the biggest stage. He just wasn't ready to lead a team from making three finals with LeBron to go into a team whom he beat in the conference finals, to making it without him and making the team worse with him. Irving cannot be the main focus of a championship team and needs to be paired with another veteran star player. Whether it's with LeBron James, Kevin Durant, or Kawhi Leonard, a lot of guys are simply not built as leaders. It's just a quality some guys have and some guys just don't. Just like how Carmelo Anthony's not a leader, he can be the best player on a contending team when surrounded by the right players in his prime and had a good leader in Chauncey Billups for the 2009 Denver team or veterans like Jason Kidd for the Knicks in 2013. Irving's poor body language against the Bucks, shown he gave up on the team, doesn't say the right things in the press conferences where it's clear his personality doesn't fit the city of Boston, which leaves a black mark on his legacy. The Knicks will continue to be a disaster if Kyrie comes without another all-star. Going to Brooklyn won't make the Nets contenders. They're better off with the younger D'Angelo Russell who's loved and cherished in Brooklyn. Growing in front of our eyes, since Kyrie also has some injury concerns over the years, his presence doesn't fit well with the young guys. If he doesn't get paired up with a strong leader, I don't ever see Kyrie Irving leading a team to a title as the face of a franchise or even far into the playoffs. We will eventually see in the coming weeks after the finals. I can see three options. Either Kyrie and KD both join the Knicks and try to make a run, or if KD goes elsewhere like the Clippers, it will be Kyrie and Jimmy Butler deciding to team up in New York, whether it's the Knicks or Nets. Since Irving grew up close to NYC, I believe he prefers to be in New York, but if those plans with either Jimmy Butler or KD fails, I strongly believe Irving will decide to join the Lakers and reunite with LeBron. Knowing the success he's had with James, who will likely still be a amazing next season before getting old. Seeing the dysfunction of the Lakers front office, I doubt LA will be Kyrie's top choice. If he teams up with KD, I can certainly see him contending and even winning a championship with the Knicks or Nets, with KD the face of the franchise, Irving as the second option. Kyrie can even win a finals MVP when he gets it going. If he pairs with Jimmy Butler, New York will be competitive, but I can never see them beating Giannis and the Bucks. And a very slight chance Kyrie might consider the Clippers, but very unlikely. But KD, Jimmy, or LeBron are three of the most likely stars he'll play with next season. After a 113-99 win over the Knicks this past February, 
Kyrie gave his game-worn jersey to his father Diedrich, who's a New York native, where he credits his pops for his development as a player and a person. That's where Kyrie's heart is, and I believe we'll see Irving as a New York Knick next season. Thank you so much for watching this video. Where do you guys think Kyrie Irving will end up? Let me know in the comments below. I love all of you. See you next time.